Hello and welcome to this video where I'll show you how you can create those beautiful scannable QR codes from the regular boring QR codes. And to do so we'll follow three main steps. First of all we're going to generate a robust QR code we will then install ControlNet and some LoRa models, if you haven't done so already. We'll install them into an existing automatic 11.11 setup, which we won't go into detail here how to set it up because there's so many good tutorials already out there. And the third and more, most important step is actually using the image-to-image -image functionality combined with ControlNet. And we'll need to apply very specific settings to make it all work. To generate the QR code, we go to qr.io. We give it the URL that we want the QR code to take us to. And then we download the PNG and save it somewhere on our disk. Next, we are going to install ControlNet and some LoRa models. To install ControlNet, we are going to the Extensions tab. We take the URL of ControlNet, which you also find in the description, copy it, and we go to the Install from URL tab, paste the URL there, and then we can click on Install. Uh, while it's installing, we can open the URL in a web browser, which takes us to the Git of ControlNet, which has some detailed installation instructions. For example, you should restart Automatic 11.11 once the installation has finished. But you also need to download some models. For this tutorial, you only need one model. The name you see here, it's Control V11 FLE SD15 Tile. And you need to download this and put it in the Web UI ControlNet models folder. To be able to use the same prompts as this tutorial does, you'll need to download three LoRa models. You find the URLs in the description, and you need to put them into the LoRa folder in the Stable Diffusion folder under models. You may want to check out this Reddit thread, which is basically the source for this tutorial. And I need to thank two users, Specialist Node and MIDI Minus, for being so awesome and sharing the knowledge and their prompts online. Now that everything is prepared, we can actually start using image to image with ControlNet. To do so, we navigate to the Image to Image tab in Automatic 11.11 and we grab our QR code and drag it into the Image to Image tab. We then scroll down to Control Net and we need to do the same here, that is to drag and drop our QR code. Then we enable Control Net. We set it to be pixel perfect. We select the preprocessor called Tile Resample. And we also select our model that we just downloaded, the one that's called Control V11 FLE SD15 Tile. We need to make some changes here in a minute, but we should run it first and see what happens. But before that, we need to enter a prompt. And also, if you want to have the exact same results, you should be using the same checkpoint as we are doing right here. So our prompt is head of a robot. But as you can see, once we generate, we get the same looking QR codes. So we scroll down and we increase the starting control step. We set it to 0 0.2 and we scroll up and set the denoising strength to 1. 
Now we generate again. And as you can see, now at least we get some variation. So the lesson to learn here is that the best results you achieve when you set the starting control step between 0 0.23 and 0 0.33. And what you can see here is that now we get something that looks somewhat like a head of a robot. So as the prompting seems to be really important here, maybe even more important than for generating regular images of stable diffusion, we can just profit by those two guys who shared their workflows and seem to have spent quite some time into figuring out some good negative and some good positive prompts for this. We can just go to Reddit and borrow their prompts, paste them into the negative and positive fields. Unfortunately, I cannot show you the negative prompt on YouTube, but you'll find a link in the description. And after I copy and pasted it into the tool, I did not make any more changes to it, only to the positive prompt, which you'll be able to see. And as soon as we click on generate, we can tell the results are a lot better and definitely going into the right direction. So as this leads to some really good results already, you could just leave the settings and play around with the prompts from here on. But we want to make some minor adjustments to even closer resemble the workflow from those guys on Reddit. One thing is to change the width and height to 768. And we also select a different sampling method here, which is what those guys used. So there's no right or wrong here. You may want to experiment with the sampler to find one that works best with the style that you want to use. So here I'm going through a couple of generations that I made with the Necronomicon LoRa. And I'm basically sitting here with my phone and the camera app open, pointing at my monitor. So this immediately tells me if a QR code can be read and if it can't be read. So if you get too many codes that cannot be scanned, you need to lower the starting control step. And when you run another generation here, you will immediately get better results that can be scanned. And this is basically the trade-off that you'll be doing. You'll be going back and forth, making sure that you get the right settings for your style. Here's a little trick. If you find a nice image that can be scanned and that you like, you can send this image to image to image, disable control net and select the poor man's upscaling script. When you hit generate, this will basically outpaint the image and create a new border, so to speak. It doesn't look really nice here, but you can, of course, play around with it and will eventually get some really nice results with that. They said you should use the same prompt as for generating the original image, but I found that there's no issue when you just change the prompt to something completely different and you'll also get nice results. Here I am trying out the Cool Kids and the Add Details LoRa. As you can see, those images I thought look really impressive. They might not all be scannable, but if you just generate many pictures, some of them will be scannable. So this is one option. The other option, as we already spoke about, if the codes cannot be scanned, you need to lower the starting control step. And if the codes look too much like codes, you need to increase that value. 
Or here's some mountains that I created with a very simple prompt. Again, you can find all the prompts in the description. And for our final part here of our lecture, we just create a few beautiful women because characters, anime characters, that's what this model seems to be trained on, the ref animated model. So once you find a picture that you like, you can send it to extras where you can upscale it if you want to. Not that you need it for a QR code, but overall the quality will be nicer. So you can send it to extras, select an upscaler and click on generate. And this usually works very fine with those QR codes. Now some of those pictures might look too good to be true and most of them cannot be scanned, at least not with my phone. But my theory is that if you just create enough, one of them will be scannable if you get lucky. So it's worth to play around with this some more, I felt. So this concludes our tutorial. I hope you learned something new. If you did, please let me know. Give me a like or subscribe. And in case you haven't noticed, this isn't my real voice. I'm using an AI voice that I trained. And in case you want to know how that's done, you can find the video on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.